<clears throat> okay, okay. So this is what we're going to do. I have to make a few adjustments. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put blue tape all around this here. And after I do the blue tape thing, I'm going to um, sand all of this stuff around on the edge. And after I sand around it, I'm going to later on paint it. So that's the reason for doing this here. Now, I wonder... The main, main reason why I want this done so badly, this is one of those things where I really want this done badly, is I might, I should have some paint that matches the, or is close enough to the wood furniture or the wood shelf behind me. All I want to do here is basically try to make it match a little bit. Since we're being a little handsy and crafty, kind of picks up. And being a little thrifty because I'm going to try to use as much of this tape as I can. I don't want to waste any of it. I had it for years. It's probably starting to degrade a little bit. But I definitely want to utilize as much of it as I can. Definitely want to utilize as much of it as I can. There we go. Got my good old fashioned exacto knife out over here. Trying to make sure I make this as accurate as possible. It doesn't have to be professional, it's just got to look close enough. You know, kind of match. Because right now it doesn't match what I've got on the back wall over there whatsoever. But does it matter? It doesn't really matter that much. It matters a little bit to me, though. It matters a little bit to me. I'm trying to get as close as possible. Oh, as close as possible. And again, I'm trying to utilize that tape. Make sure. All the way up to the edge, trim what needs to be trimmed. There we go. Now, I could have disassembled this entire thing, but I chose not to, mainly because I'm looking for spare video footage to add to my LinkedIn video that I'm attempting to create. In my head, it's, it's in my head already. I just don't have it down on actual paper yet because I'm going by the fly. I'm doing what I like right now, which is being creative. Now I will eventually make it to pen and paper and put down the ideas to make sure that the workflow flows good and I don't start spinning my wheels at any point. And that's one thing I really don't like doing. I really dislike spinning my wheels, um, doing nothing. There we go. All right. I think I remember what I was supposed to be doing. This was supposed to be inside of there. That's what I mean by I hate spinning my wheels. Oh, darn it. This was supposed to be on the inside, right about there, somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is get this here. I'm just gonna lay that there. Get these other little pieces. 
that I've got. Just kind of throw it on there a little bit. There we go. Like I said, we're trying not to waste that much. There we go. So this way, all I've got to do is sand this here and then paint that. So I'm going to consider that side to be done. Try not to get too sloppy with it. And this is going to be the other side. And this side, I will, I will utilize this a little bit here. Now, never mind that. That's a video game thing. Recently got a new character, and the video game that I'm playing on my on my um, iPad. Originally, I said I was never gonna put um, any of these video games on my iPad, but then I realized that I was playing a game that was so addictive that I needed to remove it from my cell phone. Cause that's where it was originally. I need to remove it from there and put it exclusively on the um, iPad. Basically, <clears throat> excuse me, basically restricting my use of the game. You know what, I'm gonna use this here to, just to hold it down. There you go, just to hold it down. That's what I need right there. And because I am doing this here for my LinkedIn video, I will also be adding um, this to my YouTube page raw. Well, not completely raw. Mostly raw. I'll trim the, the beginning and the end. No one needs to see or hear me walk over from one side of the room to the other side of the room. Nobody needs to see that. And nobody needs to see me or hear me sit down because the chair will make a little scrunching noise. It's, it's all weird, you know. You got to get rid of the crazy little bits. You don't need every little bit of video. Sometimes it's all about how you edit and not about what you're recording. Because you can change an entire story with some good editing. Ah, I cut that one way too short. So I'm gonna put this over here real quick. Come over here, push that in a little bit. There we go. Get that out of there. Okay, so that's that's real sloppy. That's real sloppy there. I'm gonna try to work on that though. Go. There we go. There you see that? Professional technique cut away from the body, away, not towards. I mean, I got this here from CVS on clearance while I was 50% um, off. And it's not a bad deal. I always buy, I like to refer to this as like stupid stuff that I buy because I'll buy almost anything that's, that's less than $20. $20 is like my threshold. If it's $20 or less, I'll probably buy it. You know. That's where, I, that's where I hold it right there, $20. I 
I would dip in my pocket for twenty dollars. So right now, this is the next stupid thing I'm gonna buy is ceramic coating. I found it on Amazon for like sixteen bucks, sixteen and some change. And I'm gonna use the ceramic coating not for my car, but for my lawnmower. I heard it if you uh, not lawnmower. What's that thing called? Um, the snow thrower. So now I got a lot of extra little pieces. So the side that I messed up on, and I didn't put enough down, now I can come back and use these extra pieces that I've got and just try to hold this down. There you go. Look at that. Again, utilizing every every little piece that I've got. These are all the spare pieces that I've got. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna be the not so pretty part. So I'm gonna have to take off my rings. Always fold that. Always fold. It makes it easier to just get to it next next time we want it. Checking the time here. Alright, I don't really need this anymore. Just throw that over there. Get this out of the way. And that. these guys. So I can do this here wet or dry. All of these are wet or dry. So I've got sandpaper here. Um, I'm going to go for, how smooth is that? Uh, I'm going to go for the heavy grit real, first, uh, real quick. And then after the heavy grit, I'm going to come back real fast and just hit it with Now I should have a stain that I use on the fence outside. Not have to be immaculate. Just gotta be good enough. Uh, I will do the bottom two. Now, I debated on whether or not I should unstaple these here guys and then put them back together. My idea is not to do that. Just hitting this front side one more time. There we go. A little bit of sawdust here. That side is already smooth. This side is not smooth. about that's gonna look really cool if it stains well it's gonna look really cool okay. so this is the rough side this is the smooth side all that's done all that's done all that's done I am getting a little messy here I've worked with wood before to build something for my coworker. I am not a handy guy kind of person, but I have played with video control cars 
and I've had to be a little resourceful with those, and it just kind of, I think I was supposed to be a handy, light person, but I got into using computers, so things got, you know, turned different for me. My wife thinks I should have been an engineer of some type. Uh, hopefully the camera isn't shaking too much. Alright. So, that concludes this first video. Well, this that concludes the first part of this here. Now I've got to get rid of all this sawdust. That does feel really smooth. Now, once I get rid of the sawdust, I'll be able to go in there and paint it. Once I find the paint. Okay, okay. So if I do this right, I would have used a blur right here so you can't really see people that I'm texting and stuff, my co-workers, but you can clearly see this uh, little piece right here. This is a video game that I've been playing. Um, the iPad I keep talking about is this little bad boy here. This is my favorite device um, I've had um, this guy for a while. That photo I actually took myself. So this is um, using a macro lens outside in the front yard. So that's a boring video, a boring YouTube video project that I have um, that features those flowers and a few other things going on. So this is kind of unique. Um, like I said, I work at CVS and because I work at CVS, we sometimes um, get weird things coming in. And the weird thing that came in was composition notebooks um, came to the store and they came to the store with this paper as the filler and that was kind of interesting um that's one of those unique cvs things or retail store things you don't see too often so what i'm going to do is i've got some stain that i was not going to use on the house and instead i'm going to use it right here for this chalkboard here so hopefully this is mixed well enough. We'll find out in a second. It's extremely cold. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Ooh, I remember the smell. This thing is probably a few years old. The paint. It's a few years old. And I literally just want to use this here to stain the, the wood. Again, this is going to be a rings off situation. And I think. 
I might actually put two coats on here. I'm going against the grain this time. There we go. Oh, you see that? It's all, that is, is that my streaks or is it my streaks? I don't know. We'll find out in a moment. Yeah, but I think it is starting to stain it there. I like that. Smell is not horrible. I'm actually surprised by that. I'm actually very surprised that the smell is not super loud. I mean, it does have a scent. It does have an absolute smell, but it's not as loud as I thought it would be. I'm trying to get in the edges too because that's the reason why I use this um, this painter's tape because I wanted I wanted to look as professional as possible. I am not a painter. I am um, not the best at painting. I have done a couple of paintings here and there, but you know, basically, I've done stuff that I was told that I had to do in class. Otherwise, I kind of shy away from painting. So I always feel that there's better people out there for that. Those that like to do it. Those that like to do that thing, you should have them do that thing. And this is stain that's really for the deck and fences. So what I may end up doing is once this is finished, I've got some um, Krylon or Kryla or whatever that stuff is, um, clear coat paint. And it'll basically lock this, this color in. And make it a little bit more um, tangible for me so it doesn't feel funny when I'm touching it or sticky. So that's the entire first part and the outer edges, I believe. Ah, oh, I didn't do that side yet. Okay, I gotta do the other side. Trying to make sure that you can actually see it.
This will not match what's over there completely, but it will be darker. And that's what really counts. Trying to make it closer. There we go. Okay, let's move this out of the way. That's my external hard drive, my big boy. So the first half is already done. It looks pretty darn good. I see a couple places here and, and a little bit overdone here. But remember, this is just for appearance in there. This is probably going to be the best stain right here. That is kind of awesome. Because this is where it had like this, um, not bar mark, but where the bark, um, the plant itself, the tree itself must have had some kind of damage or something. So it's a little, it's a little dark spot in there and the stain looks really good there. So it's really not that even because this side is dark. This side here is a little on the light side. So I must have put less paint over here. I got a little bit of overdoing stuff. Oh yeah, I forget. This stuff has so much oil in it. I can just... Flake that off right there real quick. There we go. And try not to mess that up again, but there's a lot of oil in this paint. So this other side here, I am going to try my best to just um, evenly and smoothly paint this in as well. Hopefully it'll look good. Uh, need something for that. There we go. And remember, We're doing this here for, um, what do you call it, for appearances, just for appearances, keeping up with appearances here, because I wanted to try to match the other stuff behind me. There we go. You know what, what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this here. I'm just going to smear it right in there. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. And just like before, I'm just going to do some long, nice long strokes in there. You know, just straight up Bob Ross this thing here. Now hopefully the lighting is about the same as before. You might be able to see right up in there that, you know, that's, that's a, little, a little bit of oil building up in there. Well, for two different reasons. Reason number one. I haven't really used this stuff in a very long time. It's probably been sitting in the garage for three, maybe four, maybe even five years. So that's totally my fault. Um, that's number one. Number two, um, these guys usually, when, when you buy this stuff, they mix it on the fly because they have the chemicals and the paint combinations right there is just go into the machine. Do, 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 do. And then once they do that, they just, um, it shakes it really, really hard and mixes all the chemicals in there to make that perfect color match. Well, unfortunately, um, because it's been sitting in the garage, which is, you know, the garage is not um, temperature um, friendly. So... 
literally, and I do mean literally, the oil has dropped to the bottom and made everything a little on the wacky side. So that is totally my fault. I probably should have tried to figure out a way to use or utilize this paint um, since I had it. But unfortunately, I just never had a purpose for it. But I was smart enough to at least not throw it away. I know it was not a good idea to throw this stuff away here. And again, these are samples that I originally purchased. Um, when was it? Oof. Three, four, five years ago, something like that. I, I can't really recall exactly when. But it was, it was when we bought a brand new fence. Um, we had an issue with the fence that we have. And we ended up having to just dump the original fence that came with the house. And when we did, um, we definitely wanted to paint the fence. Definitely wanted to paint the fence. And these are from those original samples. Well, we actually did not go with this color here. We went with something totally different. Um, because the stains that are here, they are stains, but they did not match um, the brick, the red brick that was um, at, that's in, that's actually, ugh, excuse me, um, that is actually embedded into the actual house. And it didn't match those red bricks. And because of that, I just said, you know what? Let's not order more of this here. And it's just, that's the reason why I have this like little um, small thing here. And it actually says sample on the side of it. And I think Lowe's, Lowe's actually um, sells um, cobalt. And we end up not going with these guys. We end up going for, I believe, Bear or something like that. Um, or whatever it was, we had to go to um, Home Depot to get it instead of Lowe's. Which is kind of sad because we had a, we already had a Lowe's account. And it's like, we don't want multiple accounts. We just want one. And you see me kind of stabbing it in there because I want to try to really fill in um, those gaps, those those little holes that are in there. So I want it to, to stain. There we go. Like I said, this is not going to be perfect. This is, this is um, just for looks. Because one of those... Um, one of those um, cowboy shows with Clint Eastwood. He's with this um, American Indian guy. And the, the guy carries rock candy with him. And this is like a scene that I always remember. Um, Clint Eastwood is asking the guy, you know, well, what's up with this rock candy? It's like, it's, it's not for eating, it's for looking. We use the rock candy as a looking glass. And I thought that was cool. Uh, excuse me, I had to go back for a moment here. I got a piece of tape that is in the way. And I thought that was kind of cool. It's like he doesn't use it for, for eating. It's candy. But it's 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 shaped in this way. It must be like um one of those uh, what do you call those things? Kaleidoscopes or something like that. You must have like a kaleidoscope, like like a appearance or effect to it. I thought it was a funny part of the scene of the movie. And I actually thought thought that was kind of funny, in my opinion. It's a good movie though, very good movie. I think I like that one. I think it was Outlaw Josie Wales. I think that's what it was. I think that was better. Than the Unforgiven movie, I just didn't like the, the the word usage of assassin in that movie. It was the Unforgiven movie was just just the, the use of the word assassin just threw me off. 
made the whole movie unpleasant. It's repeatedly used throughout the entire movie. And I know you're saying to yourself, wow, you know, like it's, it's just a word, but it meant something. It's like, you know what? I don't think that's the way they used to talk back then. Assassin. And this is before I had an issue with the video game Assassin's Creed. It's way before then. Way, way before then. Almost looks freaking professional. Almost. I'm not saying that I'm a professional. I'm just saying this looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to get in here, get an angle, and get rid of this exacto knife before I cut myself. There we go. Ah! Touch it. I just want to get in here and slap some paint. On here, I'm not gonna touch the actual bottoms. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna touch the bottoms. I'm gonna get all the way down here. And when I say the bottoms, I'm, I'm referring to the feet down there. I'm not gonna really touch the feet down there. But I will touch just about everything else. Like I said, this is really about me trying to get in here and you know, don't just, just even it out a little bit, flatten it out a little bit for myself. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's a whole thing over here. There we go, just get all that crap in there. There we go. Now, another thing that I could have done, this bottom in a in the center right here, I could have actually um, took those out because I do have a staple gun and just opened this up and just painted it um, on the inside, um, which I probably will do at some point if I don't do it right now. But I don't really see a need for it, at least not right now. And I already told my coworkers, hey, you know, this is going to be a weekend project. Weekend project here, people. Nothing to see here, just a weekend project. And what I might still end up doing is um, just popping this and redoing it. Um, popping this and restapling it after I paint the inside to make it more natural. And even now, you can, I think you can really see a nice difference just touching up here and there. I'm gonna hit those corners. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cap this real quick. I'm also trying not to get um, a lot of paint on myself. And I'm trying not to get a lot of paint um, just everywhere in general. Because this is, this is some messy paint. I mean, it is a stain, so it is not something you really want in your clothes. I've had some jeans. It's been stained by this stuff or some similar stuff and it doesn't come out so everything that I'm wearing right now is junk this is just something I wear around the house and nowhere else and this is pretty much the way it looks <sighs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now and when I do continue in just a few moments It'll be after I remove these plates, or, or not plates, um, I've uncovered the plates that are on there. So everything will be dry by then in probably two hours, three hours, or heck, I might just let it sit overnight. Um, in the garage, not in the house. 
Even though I said earlier, oh, it doesn't have a smell. It does have a little bit of a smell. Um, it's not loud, but it is it, it is um, nostrally visible. Let's put it to you that way. Your nose can 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 see it and feel it. Well, you know that right now. Your nose knows. Yeah, but I'm not going to let this stay in the house. The smell is not that strong, but it does have a presence. Oh, that's the best way to say it. The smell has a presence. I a text from someone. Oh, it's Facebook. Looks like it's my uncle. There is a much easier way to do this here, but sometimes I just do it the hardcore, hardcore way and just, just knock it out. Yeah, like if I ever say that, you know, I'm doing, I'm going to have to do it, um, what do you call it, I'm going to have to go the long route on doing something. Uh, my wife says I'm a lazy person. I always try to find the least um, way to do something. And that's the kind of person that Bill Gates likes. Bill Gates likes lazy people because lazy people will find the least, um, the shortest point or the shortest way, the least amount of effort to do a hard task. And that's called being proficient people. It's not actually called being lazy. It's called being um, efficient. That's what that is. It's called being efficient. Meaning, why go to point A, B, C, D, E, F, when you can just go from point A to Z in one shot? Sometimes you just gotta plan it out. You can make it all happen. Be on the inside anyway. This is awesome. I'm actually poking this one here because I need the inside of this to actually have the paint inside of the little crevices. They want going in there at first. Those imperfections need to be polished. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm starting to feel this pain a little bit. It's it's not a bad smell, but it does kind of get to you over time. It's it's a weak stink. It's a weak stink. It's not a heavy or hard stink. It's it's very faint and weak, but it's it still has a presence. Alright, so I think this is good enough. And what I'm going to end up doing is taking this outside just like this. 
not outside, in the garage, just like this. Um, the garage, even though it is not heated, um, the garage has the ability to be um, warmer than outside. And that's good enough for me. All right, let's do this.